Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena here in Windy Windy Mandelo. Mike and Julian flew home yesterday, so I am all alone aboard the boat now. The plan is to have Ava fly out in a couple of weeks with a new drive unit for the autopilot. That means I've got a couple of weeks to do some DIY projects. My name is Mess, this is my wife Ava. I've spent the last five years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That was a DIY fun-packed adventure complete with a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, rebuilding the entire deck, gutting and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior, painting the top sides and a ton of other projects. The summer of 2021 we started cruising full time, now we're finally ready to begin our adventure. The biggest project I would like to tackle while I'm still alone here aboard the boat is to install the 16,000 BTU air conditioning unit Dometic has graciously sponsored. That is going to require a little bit of prep work, figure out the best location for installing it, making sure I've got all the bits and bobs I need. So hopefully I can take care of that this week and then next week we can do the actual installation. But before I start fiddling around with the air conditioning stuff, I have a little bit of a woodworking project out in the cockpit. The cockpit sole out here gets awfully slippery when it's wet. When we applied Kiwi Grip to the rest of the cockpit, we figured we would hold off on this area just so that we could make some kind of wooden grate later on. The wooden grate would allow us to have better traction in the cockpit here and also it would fix another little issue. When I'm standing here at the helm, I often end up standing on top of this little white box here so that I can see over the dodger. But that means I'm only standing on my heels, which is not terribly comfortable for long periods of time. I've come up with a design for a very easy to build grate that will solve both the traction problem and also the white box issue. This all started last week when Judy and I spotted a tiny little woodworking shop on our way to the hydraulic workshop. One of the guys from the workshop brought me to a local lumber yard. I tried asking for Iruku, but it seemed all they had was Sapelli. I paid the equivalent of roughly 250 US dollars for two giant slabs of Sapelli. And after a quick run to the local ATM, we headed back to the workshop. The guys set to work machining the wood. Seeing as my Portuguese is non-existent and only the owner of the shop understood a little bit of English, there was very much a language barrier. But with my drawing and a bit of help from Google Translate, we made it work. After the machining was done, one of the guys gave me a lift back to the marina with all the wood. This is all of the wood the workshop machine for me yesterday. It's everything I need to build the grate plus a few extra pieces just in case something goes sideways. I didn't pay anything to have the wood machined. It took about three hours or so and I did offer to pay the guys but they declined. Instead they would like to just keep the leftover wood. Now there was a fair chunk of wood left over so I suspect it was a good deal for them but I don't need the leftover wood for anything. I can't really bring it with me so it was a good deal for them and a good deal for me. In terms of precision they're pretty freaking close. They're only off by I would say about half a millimeter which is perfectly fine for this. I did notice that these pieces here are off by exactly one centimeter, but that is an easy mistake to make. These thicker pieces with the corner cut off are for the little area around the white box aft of the helm so that the box is going to be flush with the grate. Now, I unfortunately left my drawing at the workshop yesterday, so I can't really show you what we're building before we start. So uh, yeah, let's uh, just jump right in. I busted out all of my tools and got set up in the cockpit. Sadly, the only electrical saw I have aboard is a jigsaw. Not exactly a tool that's well known for its ability to make super straight cuts, but for this I think it'll be fine. I squared up all the ends and trimmed all of these supports to length. I need to split the grate into two to be able to remove it. My first plan was to use these pieces with a cutout that allows room for the steering pedestal. But it turns out the cockpit sole is not flat and they were wobbling, so I changed my plan. The aft section seemed to be the trickiest one, so I decided to start with that one. After having trimmed all of the pieces to length, I busted out my trusty router and a roundover bit to round over the edges. The bit was a little bit more aggressive than I would have liked, but it's my only option. 
After a light bit of hand sanding, it was time to start assembling the first section. I pre-dilled and also staggered all the screws to minimize the chance of the wood splitting. The first test fit was very encouraging and after a little bit more oh glorious screwing, I finally had the sweet sweet luxury of a flat place to stand at the helm. I gave the section a light sanding before moving on to the forward section. I got all the pieces trimmed to size and got all the edges rounded over, so all that's left now is yet more screwing. Said screwing will have to wait until tomorrow because we're running out of daylight. It took a lot longer to put together the aft section than I had expected, but at least it's done. The gaps down here are not 100% uniform, but uh, it was the best I could do. I'm pretty sure I won't notice that in a few weeks, and it brings me to an important point. And um, that's the design of this grate is as simple as I could humanly possible make it. Of course, you can make super fancy grates where they're all inlaid and just super nice, but yeah, with the precision from the woodworking shop and the tools I have here aboard the boat, this needs to be very simple. The marina here seems fairly secure, so I'm just gonna leave my tools and all this stuff out here so I'm ready to jump back into it tomorrow morning. You may have noticed a squeaking noise in the background. It's because the marina here, while being pretty secure, is also a little bit on the lumpy bumpy side. So much so that it has already wrecked one of our mooring compensators. And there's already a tear in the next one right up here. So I'm sure that's not long for this world either. The one over here on the starboard side, which is a different brand, is doing much better. So the next time I have to get mooring compensators, I'm gonna stick with this brand. All praise Unimer. I'm gonna call it a day and have a nice relaxing evening and uh, I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. I started the day by marking the position of the supports. It would have been a lot easier to build this grady thingy with these screws from the top going down and then hiding the screws with little wooden bungs. But I'm pretty sure wooden bungs would be very difficult to find here. After a successful test fit, I moved the forward section to the pontoon to get a little bit more room. After copious amounts of screwing and trimming the ends, there was finally time to see if everything still fit. The forward section is also a nice snug fit, so it takes a little bit of finagling to get it in there. But once it's in, it looks pretty good for something that's cobbled together on a pontoon. There is only really one downside to this setup, and that's the fact that the deck fill for our diesel tank is hiding underneath it. Of course, the easiest thing to do for now would be to just ignore it, but I do think it's gonna be annoying long-term, and especially when we're underway, because sometimes we use our jerry cans up on deck to refuel our diesel tanks with when we're underway, and removing the forward section with the boat rocking and bouncing, yeah, that doesn't sound super appealing. If I add another support here and down here, I should be able to just cut out this section here and have access to the deck fill. I grabbed a couple of quick measurements to make sure I got the opening in the right spot. I drilled all the holes I'll need and got all the screws started. Using a bit of five minute epoxy should make absolutely sure nothing comes loose. The epoxy came with this fancy mixing tube, which in no way worked. So I ended up mixing it the old fashioned way with a bamboo skewer. With all the supports glued and screwed in place, I flipped the grate over and cut out the small access hole. The very last thing I did was to epoxy in place some little spacers to keep everything nice and centered. It is the uh, next morning and uh, the epoxy from yesterday has cured nicely. So we now have a tiny little access thingy for the deck fell. With this guy removed, there should be just enough room for a winch handle to get in there. Et voila, diesel access. The little tabs I adhered to the sides here do a great job of just making sure everything is nice and centered. The grate is not 100% done yet because right now the supports are sitting directly on top of the cockpit sole. So that means water will have a hard time getting past there. The plan has always been to take little plasticky furniture 
doofus and secure those to the bottom of the support so that there's a bit of a gap down there. But I can't find those plasticky doohickeys here in Mandelo, so yeah, that might have to wait until we get to the US. Other than that little setback, I do think this turned out fairly well considering that it's cobbled together on a pontoon. I don't know how much of it the mic is picking up, but that squeaking mooring compensator or line on the port side is driving me nuts. So my next order of business today is going to be to head to the boat store and see if they have a mooring compensator there. They don't necessarily have the biggest inventory there, so I'm kind of afraid they don't, but uh, fingers crossed. Just as I was leaving the boat, I got a call from Mark. He's at the drive unit manufacturer with the two broken units and they wanted to check a couple of things with our installation. So I emptied out the cockpit locker and folded up myself to fit inside. They had me check the alignment of the mount relative to the tiller arm and also check for resistance in the mount on the bulkhead. I think we've checked everything we can with the installation now without any explanation as to why the two units failed. Hypro, the manufacturer of these drive units, have been super helpful in trying to figure out what is wrong here. And they're also refurbishing the two broken units that's with them now so that we'll get two working units back. And a big thank you to their technician Bob for doing that. I really wish I could have been there for the disassembly. I think that would have been very interesting. But they did find some wear marks on both of the piston rods from both units. And that's why they had me check the installation again, because it looks like there's some kind of sideways force being applied or something is wonky. Now, they did also find uh, some assembly issues or one assembly issue possibly with both of the units. The reason I say possibly is because we did have or attempted to fix one of the units here in Mandela. So we don't know if that issue is from uh, here or from the factory. But yeah, it all boils down to we don't really know what went wrong, but at least now we have or we will soon have three working units. Maybe it's some kind of weird combination of the assembly issue and the little steering issue we had in the passage from the Canary Islands to Cape Verde. But then that wouldn't really explain why the first drive unit died. So yeah, it's, it is a little bit of a mystery. I think the best thing I can do for now is just to see how the Atlantic crossing is going to play out because with three units, I mean, there's a pretty good chance we're going to get across. And then when we're in the US, I can put the boat up on the hard, drop the rudder and just triple and quadruple check all of the steering just to make sure there are no issues there. Anywho, I was heading to the boat store to see if they had mooring compensators. I'm holding off on showing you Mandela until Ava gets back. I think that'll be a fun video to shoot with her. But in case you end up here needing some boat stuff, the one and only boat store in Mandela is called Boat CV. It's located about 10 minutes from the marina up on the first floor in what looks like an apartment building. Alas, I have returned empty handed. They were sold out of mooring compensators. But I have managed to find a lot of the stuff I need for the air conditioning install here on the island. For instance, two different diameter hoses and a small mountain of hose clamps. Something I haven't been able to find is a skin fitting for my True Design ball valves. So I'm going to use this Groco one instead. It doesn't really help me out a whole lot because I need to go to half an inch hose and this is three quarter hose. And of course, this is an NPT thread and not BSP. So Ava's gonna have to bring a hose pipe in the right size and also a C strainer. I wasn't able to find that here either, but I should be able to get started on the air conditioning install next week. Of course, before I reached out to Dometic regarding the air conditioning, I did double check that we have room to install it in the hanging locker, but that's the only place I've checked. I just wanna make absolutely sure there's not a better location for it. As always, I have thoroughly read and reread the manuals. One of the great little illustrations that were included is this one, where we see that the air conditioning or condenser coil is located above the waterline. Just to make sure I cross all of my T's and dot all of my whatevers, I did reach out to the medic just to verify that the unit has to be installed above the waterline. They said that it is okay to install it below. The reason they've got it up here on the drawing is so that it's easier to drain the condensate from the unit. With that little question cleared up, there are some potential places for me to install the air conditioning. 
The first one I thought of was behind the dryer in here. That would involve pulling the dryer inboard a little bit to leave room for the air conditioning unit. That would be a great option if it wasn't for the fact that I'll have to put a vent grady thingy over here to be able to get cold air into the saloon. And that means cutting a giant hole right next to our most highly loaded chain plate. Another option could be over here underneath the settee, but uh, yeah, we'll have to grab a quick couple of measurements of the unit to see if that will actually work. This thing is pretty freaking massive. There is enough room in here for the unit. I'd have to cut a big hole here for the seven inch ducting that connects to it. And then it would all be dependent on whether or not the seven inch ducting can come up behind here. This is the giant Y that's used to connect the seven inch outlet to the six and the four inch outlet. So this would have to go either down here or somewhere in behind here. I'll definitely have to bring the ducting out going forward and then up through this area here most likely. I can't go forward underneath the settee because of the water tank. So that'll end up wrecking one, two, three, uh, three and a half storage spaces. Whereas if we install it here inside of the hanging locker, I think we'll end up losing less space overall. One of the things I need to make absolutely sure is that the unit gets enough supply air. So that will mean having to replace this door with a louver door, but that should do the trick. I figured out where I want to install the air conditioning unit. I have sourced as many parts as I possibly can locally, and I've ordered the parts I couldn't find here for Ava to bring when she flies over. So tomorrow we start installing air conditioning. I don't foresee us using the air conditioning a ton in the Caribbean because we're mainly going to be anchoring and there's going to be tons of wind to cool the boat down with. But as soon as we start heading north for hurricane season, so when we get to Florida and when we get to the Chesapeake, places like that where we might go into a marina every once in a while, I think the air conditioning is going to be a godsend. I'll end this week's video here and then I hope to see all of you guys back here at Port Athena next week for yet more oh, glorious DIY fun. So yeah, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you!